All right, guys. Well, good morning to each one of each of you. Good morning. All my little devices set up. All right. All right. Well, happy Wednesday to everyone. I pray you guys had a, a peaceful night and ready for today. <clears throat> Hopefully everybody will come on in in just a little bit. Uh, well, we're going to continue our conversation this morning on uh, relational goals. Um, I hope that the things that you guys have heard thus far, I know we're not um, close to the end of this. We're just really getting started with it, but I hope that uh, the things that you guys have heard already are starting to stir you up and making you think about different things and, you know, allowing you an opportunity to uh, really uh, go back in on a practical um, uh, level and go back in and re-examine, you know, your relationships for growth. You know, we don't want to go back and, you know, start uh, pulling up dead weeds or anything like that. But um, but if necessary, you do want to get those out of there. But more than anything else, I want more than anything, I want you to start focusing on uh, the, the, the direction that you want to go in with your relationship. And when you acknowledge something or see something, hey, just see it, uh, make the necessary acknowledgement of it, um, uh, think about ways that you can adjust, uh, make changes. One of the things that I heard the Lord saying this morning, because th there's some things that, that continually ring through my ear, uh, because I'm, I'm praying for certain individuals that, um, um, you know, that, you know, come before me. And I know sometimes it takes a minute for a change, because if you're not in, a, in, you know, individuals' lives all the time, you know, um, you know, you don't get that opportunity just to, um, you know, be there to be a teacher or whatever. And, and, and I don't think it's necessary that you just be a teacher in everybody's life, but you have those moments where you can help to impact, um, you know, and one of the things that the Lord says that one of the great ways that you can um, uh, kind of examine yourself sometimes is to hear yourself talk. You know, when you hear yourself talk, you get a chance to, um, um, and I want you to pay attention to it. Next time when you're just in general conversation uh, with someone, um, I want you on purpose, like at nighttime when you go to bed tonight, I want you to activate that in prayer. You know, like, you know, God, help me to see me, help me to uh, pay attention to the things that I'm doing. Help me to bring my focus back in, you know, um, you know where it needs to be. Uh, even uh, go through a, a phase of, of repentance in advance, you know, Lord, you know, help us to see what we don't always see, you know, sometimes because we go in directions that um, you asked us not to go in and we don't pay attention to it until some damage has been caused, or whatever, but Lord, help me be on damage control and uh, help me to listen to the words that I'm saying. So in, intentionally have that turned on uh, in your mind so that the next time it happens, when you get in a conversation with people, pay attention to the way you talk, uh, pay attention to the way you say things. Pay attention to the way you hear, you know, um, you know, pay attention to uh, what uh, motivates and what, um, you know, kind of drags you off and make the proper adjustments. You acknowledge it. And so when you come into like your journaling early in the morning time and you could tell when the Holy Ghost is trying to help you with it because early in the morning is going to be on your mind. And we're randomly writing things that are on our mind. You know, what did you wake up with? What was the sound? Who were the people? What were the places? What were the things that were on your mind? And go in and take some more examination of it. You know, what is it about the kids that I'm hearing? You know, what is it about my spouse and I that I'm hearing? What is it that I'm no longer hearing? You know, um, um, and, and not how they can make an adjustment, but how you can make an adjustment. Because all of it's about servanthood, building relationships, having relational goals. It's all about servanthood. How can I serve? How can I do that better than what I did before? And you'll be amazed at how you can really do some self-checks like that. And the Holy Ghost will come in and help you to make the necessary adjustments. Because what will happen when it's intentional, when, when you're doing that, um, you're going to notice that God is going to start putting you in the company of individuals that are talking about those kinds of things, uh, you know, making whatever adjustments that need to be made. And, you know, it's like that thing kind of captivates you. It gets your attention. And it's like, all right, God, I can see these things here. And I thank you. And that's all we do. We just put a praise on it. Lord, I thank you 
uh, for your word. I thank you for revelation. And I thank you for, you know, uh, helping me to make those adjustments. And before long, you'll start seeing the results of it because when you have conversations again, you'll start realizing that the conversations are changing because you're listening to you. You're paying attention to you, not necessarily anybody. I want you to watch the way you criticize other people, uh, the things that people do, how they don't do it the way you do it, <laughs> you know, and uh, um, how they put on certain things. And it, 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 why did it aggravate you what they had on? Why did that aggravate you? What they had on? The way they said something to you, why did that aggravate you? I'm just saying, it's bringing us into a place of awareness so that you can catch those little foxes that's trying to destroy your vibe. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, those are just some few exercises that you guys can do in the morning time just for your own self-evaluation. And uh, you'll be amazed at how it will help. Another thing, like if you are uh, doing any type of leading, that's another thing. Uh, like say, for instance, if we're talking about relationship goals and you are, you know, wanting to, you know, maybe become a life coach or you're wanting to, you know, lead or uh, you're wanting to manage something. Um, you know, when you do a session with someone, record yourself and go back and listen to yourself. I know some people don't like hearing themselves, but just do it. Just go back and hear yourself, hear your tone, hear your pitch, hear what makes you excited. See, because once you get into en engaging, you're going to find out who you are in the middle of it because you can't hold it back by that time. You know, you can try to watch things for a little while, but after a while, it's going to kind of go on automatic, but pay attention to it. This, these are personal development classes. I want us all to develop more and more in a place of awareness so that we can make the proper adjustments that need to be made. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to go in a little bit deeper this morning and talk about those relationship goals. Um, I'm probably going to lead us off this morning. And uh, we, if we have some time, we'll come in and do the uh, takeaways. And because uh, we only have one more day to hit at this thing. And uh We'll see what God does with it all. But let's go ahead and go in forward of prayer and then we will move forward. All right. All right. Well, Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for your presence. Uh, Father, I understand that in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And there are so many pleasures, Lord God, even at your right hand forevermore. Uh, Father, we wake up this day with a spirit of anticipation. Uh, Father, that nothing stays the same. We anticipate, Lord God, you stepping in, intervening in those areas that need to be shifted, those things that need to be moved around, that, those things that we need to discover about ourselves. So, God, we're standing in awe, and we're in that place, Lord God, to where we are activating even our faith. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Once we hear the word of God or we hear our rhema word, I pray, Lord God, that you would help us apply those things to our lives. Uh, we ask, Lord God, for your guidance on this morning as we go into this lesson. Uh, Father, make teaching very easy and let listening be easy as well. Bring us into the law of focus. We can't be in two places at one time. We thank you already in advance for what you're going to do in each one of our lives. We pray one toward another. We show that unity and love. Uh, that is not just about me, Father, but we care for our brothers just as well. So we're going to make the proper adjustments that we need to make in our lives so that when we come into the company of others, Lord God, that we would be able to release such a sound of love toward them that anything can happen. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, all right. I want to just say hello to everyone. Mrs. Cheryl, good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Deborah Boney, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Delcina, good morning. Uh, Dr. Nisa Jenkins, good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Jacqueline Hall, good morning. Mrs. Karina Smith, good morning. Uh, Kathy Mitchell, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Mitris Mosley, good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Dorothea Taylor, good morning. Uh, Renata Fuller, good morning. Uh, good so morning. I say good morning, good morning. Mrs. Shelley Roman, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Shirley Clark, good morning. 
Mrs. T uh, uh, Tamara McClinton, good morning. And Mrs. Nika Glenn, good morning, good morning. All right, majority of the family is here and I know everybody else will be joining in in just a little bit. But we're gonna go ahead and get started this morning. We're talking about those immediate and short-term relationship goals. And if you guys would do me a favor, as you hear the one uh, that stands out to you, put it in the chat box and we can, I can look over at it and maybe we can do a little dialogue or I can go a little bit deeper into that. And, uh, you know, put your thoughts in because I want to go in and make sure to kind of capture uh, the chats. I do I do get the reports of them, so I uh, will do that. Sabrina says, great question for a self-check. I have to write those down. Amen. Amen. Y'all go back and listen to the replay, those of you that came in just a little bit later, and I get those questions that, that, that were at the beginning that we're asking everybody to be challenged with. Amen. All right. So we are talking about relationship goals on this week and we are setting priorities in our lives. And uh, one of the things, these are the ones that we're going over. We're, we're talking about those immediate and short-term relationship goals, uh, making sure that we prioritize each other. We have daily connection time. We communicate with kindness. We embrace vulnerability. We plan for fun together, understand each other's love languages, support one, another, one another's goals and have a yearly review. Uh, yesterday we got we jumped in we talked about prioritizing each other um sometimes we take each other for granted i think it's a given that we do that i don't think we do it on purpose it's that life happens and we get caught up in the middle of life and you know we as the children are needing our undivided attention in one season or our marriages are needing that undivided attention in one season uh we move from there and they don't seem to need us as much and we tend to take our focus and attention away from those things. And um, and I don't think it was meant for us to take our full attention away. Sometimes it just gives you room to do other things, but also at the same time, you get an opportunity to, you know, still pay attention, but, you know, at a distance, you can, you can kind of uh, watch and learn, and, you know, you don't have to be up close and personal uh, watch and learn. And that's what happens when our children get to a certain age. Also, we get a chance to watch and learn. You know, we're not all up in their faces and, you know, having to give instructions. In and, or, and if you are doing that somewhere, you skip the step in the in the growth process where you forgot to take your hand up off of them and you did not give them responsibility. You got to give them responsibility. That's setting those boundaries. Okay. There are some things that we are taught to do. It's not a male gender thing, male or female gender thing. It's just that we, we're taught to, you know, uh, bring our best selves forward. If you see the trash, get the trash out. Unless you guys have just set it up that, hey, you know, such and such does it, but it's not going to hurt you to pick up something and do something just a little bit different. Uh, we get distracted with our own stuff. And we neglect to tune in to the needs uh, and desires of others. Uh, Renata says supporting one another's goals catches my attention. Yes, we're going to get to that, Renata. Um, uh, it's a commitment you have to reinforce every single day and in all decisions and actions. See, when you bring your focus and attention, uh, the, I think it's in uh, James, he talked about setting on the scripture. It says, set your affection on things that are above and not on the things of this earth. Those things are important to God and building kingdom relationship is important to God. You know, a lot of things that we have our hands on, you got to go back and examine yourself. That's another thing uh, to put on your list of, you know, early morning, uh, your checklist of things. See what you gave your attention to the day before, you know, uh, and, and check to see was your family included in that. You know, because um, a lot of times we can find ourselves doing more outside the home than we do inside the home. You know, you, you got to have a, a level of commitment. Uh, you got to have affection for whatever it is that you're wanting to stay in your world and you're like, what, what did you do uh, to, you know, um, do something to make that relationship stronger? Just a little bitty thing. You know, you learn a love language and do little things like that. I think from time to time, we should be on purpose thinking. Like when you get up and you're doing your journaling in the morning time, I want you to, when you see areas uh, to where a person is struggling in something or you're struggling with them with something, uh, maybe to, you know, crack that, you know, that, that, that door of, of, of communication open or whatever, do a little something, you know, that, that kind of touches their heart. Find out where their love language is. 
you know, uh, if they're very, um, you know, um, um, affectionate, whatever, you know, find little things uh, to let them know that you are connected to them send a little song to them or whatever, you know, could be the kids too, could be people on your job, whatever. Y'all, I do this with my coworkers. We're in a text chat. Uh, we have teams that we work with, like on the job. And so we have a, a chat box um, that we communicate with from time to time. And every now and then, when I think about it, it could be on Sunday morning, I'll shoot them a text, <laughs> something funny, you know, or whatever, something to think about. Cause you never know when people are in different stages or whatever. Uh, we got one, one guy, y'all wanna tell you, if y'all listen, oh, I can't wait to get that part about the huddling up. When you huddle up with people in groups, you learn some things about them that you would not imagine. We've got this, this gentleman, uh, he's our facility guy. And I'm so glad that, you know, uh, we brought him in to do that job. His personality is just so, Oh my God, he just, he, he like that big brother, you know, that you you never had or whatever. And um, uh, we were talking one day and everybody had to do a life in pictures. This was one of our staff meetings that we did, life in pictures. And when he came in to do his life in pictures, though he's our facility guy and, you know, he, you know, he, he also oversees the service department to where, you know, when your trucks come in and you're you need all change, you need little things, service or whatever, he oversees that. But y'all, when we were talking about life in pictures, y'all, he 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 loves um a uh, jazz. He had Louis Armstrong all over his all over his board. White guy. He had Louis Armstrong all over. He had all of these black artists all over his thing. He's a lover of music. He's very, you know, eclectic with his personality. And I'm like, I wonder how he grew up to have that type of love like that. See, because you have a passion for what you put time into what you time, put time and energy, pay attention to what they listen to, music that they listen to, you know, that evidently that thing sets their, their heart ablaze or whatever, unless it's something that's negative, you don't want to keep supporting whatever that is, but, you know, to put them in a different frame of mind. So be committed, reinforce this time together, and sometimes it causes recalibration. When they shift, you need to shift with them, see where they're going, see what's, what's being done you know, on the job, whatever the case may be in your church, you can recreate. Y'all, I went back and I was listening to the um, leadership conference again. They put it on replay. And um, uh, I went back and, you know, got a chance to look at, listen to the breakout session. Oh my God, every one of those things were phenomenal. But one of them, uh, the gentleman that, uh, he's the armor bearer to Bishop Jakes, uh, he did a session called Boundless, uh, Boundless. And uh, they went in to talk about how everything has shifted during this pandemic, the way we do uh, church, the way we communicate. And there was one gentleman on there to where he's doing relationship every day with his volunteers. Say he oversees 3,500 volunteers. And he wanted to know, how are you keeping these people all together? And one of the things he says that we come back every every week and come in and talk about where we are. Uh, what are the things that need to be shifted? He said, we brought the young people to the table. It's their turn because who is more, um, um, who is more um, advanced in this technology world than these kids? And for a while, y'all, we were complaining about them being on their phones all the time. They being real techy, they doing all this kind of stuff. But they, what they were doing, they were, God was getting them prepared for this shift that was going on and getting us prepared for it. He said, so what we do, we recognize the people that have these certain gifts. Another lady she talked about, she said, on your teams, she said, you may not be the one that needs to lead all the time. You know, you never know when people just need an opportunity to do something different. She said, you've got to go in and assess where their skills are, you know, reevaluate and re recalibrate. It's not all about us. See, there is a time of pruning that takes place in any growth season with our family, with our children, everything. You give them responsibility. That's one of the purposes for giving them responsibility. So the one, they will, they will already be in a flow of doing of doing things. So when innovative ideas come in, God, what do he say? He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. If this person is already in a sewing mode, meaning they're already doing things or getting involved, more creative, more creative things are gonna to begin to start dropping on their heart. And more, the more they are apt to serve, the more God's gonna bring opportunities for them to serve. Didn't he say your gift will make room for you? 
and it'll bring you before great men. Just prioritize one another. And one of the things that I heard Antoine talk, Antoine talk about was he said, you got to know how to serve your leaders, know how to serve your people see what they need, know when you need to talk and when you don't need to talk, know when there's a shift that has taken place, you know, and you got to be so committed to serving, not people pleasing, but serving, serving and seeing what their needs are so that there won't be a gap even in their lives because they're not strong everywhere. You know, they may act like they are, we may act like we are, we're not strong everywhere. Those people that you find uh, that are very critical with others, Sometimes I do believe the criticism come because they're focusing on all of their all of their flaws all the time. And I think the way to bring a person out of a place of criticism is that you go in and you highlight their assets. Highlight it for them. Maybe that's not what they're used to, you know? And it'll sound foreign to them at first, but keep doing it. Recalibrate, keep doing it. Have daily connection times. Okay, spending one-on-one -on -one time together. These are great little little bitty things that you can do to build your relationship. Wherever you, wherever your relationship is struggling, I don't care where it is. Uh, do little things where you build one-on-one -on -one time together just to reconnect old friendships. You know, whatever. Um, you because because you got to get to know each other in the new space that you're in. Um, you know, you got friends that have you know gone off. You know, they've gotten married or. Um, you got to give them space to be in the marriage without, you know, trying to be too involved in it or whatever, because that's a growing season for people. They have to learn, you know, what they like, what they don't like. And, and one thing I'm learning when they need you, they'll call you. They're not going to they're not going to call on you every day. This is something my son and I, DeMarcus, when DeMarcus first got married, uh, you know, Mark was used to used to be, you know, when Mark moved out on his own, um, Mark was the last one to call me every night. Every night before we went to bed, I could I could look for it. He wouldn't say nothing, but mama, what you doing? He just connected and he would just talk for a minute. He said, all right, then. One thing I'm learning is Marcus is such an extrovert that people are his kryptonite. And when he don't have them around him, he feel like he's dying. I think the, I think the, um, the, the hard part about those of us that are like that is that you don't enjoy your own one-on-one -on -one time. You want to spend one-on-one -on -one time with others, but you ought to reconnect, but you also need to bring some one-on-one -on -one time with you and God so that y'all can reconnect. Make sure you're not giving out too much. Maybe you make sure you're not giving unwanted advice either, unsolicited advice, making sure that you stay in alignment with the needs that are there. You know, it's kind of like doing a daily checklist, you know, if you're on the job and, you know, you're losing uh, you know, time, you know, uh, throughout the day, not being able to accomplish different things, go back and start doing a, ch a task list, a checklist, and check those things out. Re reconnect with yourself. Find out where you lost yourself at. Where is it that you're not putting focus and emphasis on getting things done? Pay attention to work, what you spent a whole lot of your time on. I was telling my sister yesterday, I said, one thing, when I, you know, uh, come off the job, uh, there's some things that I'm going to start providing because I know that's where people's attention at. They on Facebook all day long. When I tell you all day long, it's like because you're tired of being in Zoom meetings and people, people even in here in the morning time, they're on Facebook. They're in the class, but they're on Facebook too. And the reason I know it, when I get out to Facebook, I saw something you put out there and it was during the time we were in the session. Reconnect. Reconnect to yourself. That's why I say be in one place at one time. Find ways to, you know, get the attention of individuals, you know, and 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 do that. Do that one on one. This is your time to reconnect with yourself. You know, you you can't worry about what everybody else doing. Facebook gonna be out there when you get back. Use this as your time to connect, so that you can connect to others the way you way you need to a little bit later. Um, it's especially important to carve out time. You got to make time, set time for those things without distraction or interruption. And this is from children and otherwise setting boundaries is not your day. You know, uh, carving out time for your you know relationships that really matter, and don't overdo one and not the other. Bring some balance to it all. A lot of times that's where that crying is coming from because, you know, everybody needing attention and nobody knows how to say that they're acting it out. Uh, this connection time doesn't need to be hours long. Sometimes it's just small thing. Even 15 to 20 minutes is enough to reinforce how much you care about each other. 
little bitty thing. When I start thinking about people and they're heavy on my mind, oop, there goes a text. And I'm going to send something, you know, really nice or funny to them or whatever. Let them know I'm thinking. And then I put thought into what I send. I don't just go out there and pick the first thing. I put thought into it. I send it. Sometimes it's worship. Maybe that's the place that I'm in. Uh, maybe it's a read, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I want to kind of go back to this one for a minute. This is some God place in my heart. Um, now having daily connection time, it means that um, I'm so connected to your purpose. I think this goes along with the one that Renata said, that supporting one another's goals, connection time. I want y'all to think about this. Um, when you see one person throwing uh, or not throwing or placing some form of a connection piece out there, stay in the flow, okay? And yeah, well, I wanna say, well, family members, stay, stay in the flow. It's, it's, it's called not over-talking one another, okay? They're putting something out there and then all of a sudden somebody else throws something else out there that goes around what the, it's, it's, it's doing little bitty conversation. That's like talking over somebody. Have you ever seen that done? Someone will put a thought or an idea out. And then the next thing you know, somebody will come in. They don't, they, they don't regard the conversation. And people get a little, little something with that. You know, it's, it, it's, it's a little bit different when it's in a text than it is in a real, real time. But when you hear a person putting their heart out or their gesture out, don't come back and counteract it with something else. This is something that I said, y'all know I'm very transparent with a lot of things. This is, a, this is what I see people doing, you know, especially like in the business world out there, whatever, and you guys are in a connection piece. We see it in homes also. Uh, the person will put out a gesture of something that they're doing, and then all of a sudden somebody will come in and override what you just said as if what they're doing is more important than what you just said. Let me say that again. They'll go in and throw something out there that goes, I mean, just in a, it, it, it's like they're not listening. They're not connected. See, because my thing is it's about time and okay, well, maybe that's not the time to put mine because I want people to be able to digest what that person just said. I don't want to over talk the situation or I don't want to take over whatever it is. I want to stay in the vein. I want to give it some time. And then after a little bit of time, you know, after we have kind of, you know, soaked in that particular moment, we go on to something else. This happens every day without people paying attention to it. We override one another's conversations as if that person's conversation did not mean anything. And before long, this is how people check out. It's like, well, nobody's listening to what I'm saying anyway, but it's a lot, of, it's about this communicating with kindness. Goal setting must include the ways you communicate together. Notice how we speak to each other with, with cruelty and unkindness. Those to me are acts of unkindness when you do things like that. You don't give a person to uh, finish their thought, you know, what was important to them for the day without you coming in and overriding what it is that they were saying. We wanna stay in a conversation. This also helps us when we are uh, learning how to communicate and how to conversate with others. Uh, we learn the art of communication. You know, we, we, we talk one, one by one. And, and, and a dialogue is when we connect the pieces. You know, one person is talking, another person adds on to that particular comment and they continue to keep adding on to it. And then all of a sudden there's a, kind of like a pause and we go to another thing don't don't override what you see somebody else doing this is what um you see um you see a whole lot of um un, un, unkind gestures like that and i don't think people are doing it on purpose i think they're doing it unconsciously because that's what's in them they're not paying attention to what it's showing you they're not paying attention to what you're saying it's all about me and in order for you to build relationships, you've got to give time for people to get involved in whatever the conversation is. When we feel hurt, angry, frustrated, it's so easy to lash out and say hurtful things. This is what happens when communication 
uh, is not uh, be going out effectively and kindness is not there. Because right about now, you're not caring about what I say. I'm not caring about what you say. And now we start throwing stuff out there because, see, I'm, I'm, I don't learn the art of, of conversation to where I talk about what's really bothering me. I act it out. Remember, hurt, that's a feeling. Anger, that's a feeling. Frustrated, that's a feeling. And when you start lashing out, that means it's been on overload for a while. You got to be willing to come in and reconnect and some kind of way, you know, kind of talk about whatever they think, you know, whatever the issue is. And then sometimes it, it'll be good. You know what? I'm sorry. You know, I put that thing out there and we were not, uh, we weren't on that particular subject matter. Let me pull that back. Pay, remember I told you at the beginning of the call today, go back and pay attention to things that you're doing. You want to make your relationships better? Pay attention to it because nine times out of 10, how you do one thing is how you do it a lot of things. You're doing it in various settings. You're not paying attention to it. And a lot of times people are not calling you to the table because if you have a, if you don't have a kind, kind communication valve in you, arguments, um, uh, another, because you're not listening to yourself, it's going to be another argument or it's going to be another um um, defensive thing that comes out and we've got to start paying attention to it. Notice how we speak to each other. Notice how you speak to one person one way and speak to another person another way. Somewhere is something in there. See, because if you can switch your valves that quick and you can switch your hat real quick and you quickly remember that this ain't, this ain't them that I was offended by, I can talk real nicely to these people over here. But these other folks that I have found offense in, I need to figure out why I am so offended by them. Because it's not really hurting them. It's causing me to be a Jekyll and Hyde. One day, one day I'm, 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 I'm good. And another day I'm switching to another. You shouldn't have that many people inside of you. Do you learn to identify, all right, you're hurt. What does that mean? What are you hurt by? You know, you're angry. What is it that you're angry, angry by? You want to learn how to communicate because when you get into relationships or, you know, on the job, if you're still dealing with all these emotions out front, it's going to be very hard for, for, you know, God to trust you in positions of leadership because you blow up all the time. Something somebody did aggravated you and you're not carrying uh, the, you're not carrying um, the mantle of the position that you're holding because you're housing your emotions, your feelings, your whatever, all that stuff, and it's lashing out. But you can tell when it when it comes, when it's when it's there, because when when conflict comes, whatever, whatever is in you comes out of you. Okay. And you know, and a lot of times, you know, you don't know it until you touch it. And so a lot of times we wonder why we're not being promoted in those places because some of this stuff is still with files open in the back. It's unconscious things that are there. So we're setting these immediate and short-term goals for our relationships by identifying what we're doing. Sometimes we employ passive aggressive words and behaviors with subtle digs. We do subtle deceit. I'm, you know, I'm gonna throw a little arrow at you or whatever, manipulation or stonewalling to express how you feel, unacceptable form of communication, whining, complaining, you know, um, you know, pulling back, uh, that's, that's the, you know, and sometimes we find ourselves going into caves and, or we, we just run away. Uh, you know, um, I've seen, I've seen in, yeah, silent rebellion. I've seen individuals, um, in my earlier times in my programs, they walked away because they were, they were, they were silently angry about something. And maybe you didn't come to their aid for something that was going on or, um, maybe it was, um, um, you know, maybe it was, maybe you thought they saw something they didn't even see, something they should have taken care of, and maybe that was something that was not within their, what it, it could have been anything, could have been a lot of things, and uh, you got to learn how to, you know, deal with issues at hand and call it to the table. I remember one situation, uh, communicating with kindness here, uh, I knew it was vital that I bring this thing to the table because it could destroy the ministry. Uh, this one lady had come in and um, um, we had we had done some act of kindness or whatever. And, um, you know, the words had gotten out about, um, I guess we didn't do it the way they wanted to do it or whatever. And they began to start employing this thing here, hurt, anger, because they had expectations. 
from what they thought it was supposed to be or what we were supposed to be doing. I don't know what they thought. I don't know how much money they thought we had within our ministry or whatever we were we were at when we first started uh first of all like with my outreach ministry which was we were building relationships with one another and people were doing things out of the kindness of their heart we didn't have money within our ministry every week we came together and the lady they do just what y'all are doing now we haven't changed any of that they just gave out of the goodness of their hearts you know and i don't know if this individual thought there was a whole lot of you know something built up or whatever and uh when it was their time um, they felt that we should have given them like, you know, should have went over overboard with it. And that's not the way it was. It was we set out a certain, you know, task to do some some, some things. And uh, we did that, but it did not come in the way they, they thought that it would. And it started creating these emotions. And then the next thing you know, it was that passive aggression. And then we start seeing behavior. They started spreading things out to other people. But what I'm so grateful for is that uh, the people in the ministry uh, knew me a lot better than that. And they and we had built relationship on purpose that they came back and asked. They came back and asked as soon as a person said it to them. Little bitty thing, but you can do little digs like that. You know, and at first, you know, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised, I, was, I probably was more hurt, but I wasn't surprised at all, you know, because you know how you watch little, uh, behaviors in time in times past and uh you kind of pick up on little things so now my thing is how to how to do it and I did I went straight to the source I wasn't beating around no bush or nothing I want to go straight to the source and see if there was a misunderstanding in this you know I'm still building a relationship I'm I want and listen and then it's unfortunately or fortunately sometimes when we're building a relationship you're teaching people how to deal with conflict resolution they don't know how to deal with that except for arguing, fussing, fighting, backbiting, doing all kinds. And you're teaching them a proper way to deal with conflict. And it sounds very foreign to them. If I, it sounds like a fight to them. And you have to keep, no, 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 that's not what it is. We're just bringing things to the table so that there not be a place where we can put it up under the rug. And that's very, that's not common to everyone. When you start doing that, with conflict resolution and you realize that the people around you have not grown, that means you've got grown them in your communication style. I don't want you to stop being you. I want you to find the people that communicate effectively because you're gonna need somebody to keep building you up because after a while, if you keep hanging around the same people, they're gonna tear you down and you're gonna go back to that same behavior. Well, they say birds of a feather flock together. You want to be able to employ some acceptable forms of communication. You know, that that's not healthy to run away from everything or uh, to get offended by something somebody said. Because sometimes your the way you heard it uh, could be a reminder. Does this make sense to y'all? The way you heard it could be a reminder of something someone else did. And we quickly take offense to different things. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Uh, we talk about being uh, overt uh, or, you know, doing something that shows open or plain, uh, something that's open and plainly apparent or uh, uh, covert where it's not open. And behaviors like these are deeply wounding. And over time, they accumulate enough to even cause problems in relationships. You start losing trust, mutual respect, and eventually love it. You know, listen, people don't just walk away. They don't just walk away. It was brewing up under there. Nothing just happened. So we make it a goal to be kind in all of our communication. We start thinking. That's why we go back and listen to ourselves when we're conversating about different things. You are making an intention, an intensive uh, effort to hear yourself so that you can make the proper adjustments that need to be made. It, 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 I want to tell you, it will, it will enhance your relationships because everybody's not going to always say something about your behavior, you know, especially, you know, when it's, when it's parents with children, they're not going to say anything or else they just, you know, they don't care and they just get into the fight. But you as a, as a you know, we're, we're, we're at a mature level than that. We should be to where we start paying attention, you know, make it a goal to be kind in all your relationship or your communication. Being kind doesn't mean you have to agree with each other or even feel, feel loving 
during a challenging moment. This is where the conflict resolution comes in. And you have to, sometimes you have to open it up with, you know, um, I'm, 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 I'm sharing this, you know, you know, from my heart, because this is something that I'm noticing, you know, whatever. And um, because especially if you realize that they get offended very quickly, you know, you, you have to, first of all, get that sting up out of there because they mean they're going to go to what's in them, make that, that necessarily necessary adjustment within yourself. Because remember, we're learning their love language. I'm going to speak to them in love because I got to, I got to, I got to get that offense up out of them. Even if I didn't place it there, it's there. Okay. And then, you know, it doesn't mean you have to agree with what they're doing. You know, sometimes you just have to let them know, Hey, I hear you. But, you know, let, let's kind of think about that a little bit different, you know, how, I, and sometimes, especially if they're Christians, one of the things that you can do, you can come in and bring in accountability, you know, how is that going to build your relationship with Christ? It'll make them stop every time. How does that conduct build your relationship with Christ? Especially when you hear folks say, well, you can't tell me that I'm saved just like you are, challenge them. Don't go and argue with them. How is that going to build your relationship or our relationship better with Christ and come up out of there and give them time to think. Holy Ghost will do the rest. It does mean you agree to avoid attacking, insulting, and intentionally wounding each other. It means you speak forthrightly without using passive and manipulative behavior. You don't love me anymore, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's manipulating when you do that. You don't have to do that, you know, be open with your conversation. Embracing vulnerability, uh, entering into relationship with past baggage. You got a lot of stuff on you. You and, and when I say relationship, I'm talking about everything. You got some past baggage with your church too, with churches you've been involved with. You got past baggage on your jobs. I've seen it too many times. When you enter into relationship with past baggage, insecurities, feelings of shame or guilt, intentious hopes and dreams, we have vulnerabilities that we want to hide from others so they don't think less of us. I'm not weak, you know, and sometimes we don't say stuff because, you know, what they say, we, we are angry black women. So we got to hold our feelings, you know, uh, kind of in wrap. No, no, no. You got to embrace the vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. This is how we feel sometimes as black women. We can't in our relationship, we can't always talk to our brothers because they think that we're being attacky. And you're not really trying to be attacking. This, this is where I am right now. And see, when you start learning the art of communication, you could bring this to the forefront that this is not how I'm always going to be. This is how I am right now. And this is what it looks like to me. Open communication. That's, we're on this thing. Don't, don't wake up love before time. Build relationship with people so that they get to know you and they don't start judging you. You got to give people time to wash, wash from their past when you get into relationships with people. When you first come in, you gotta remember, you have not been the only person that's been a part of their lives and we bumping into each other as we're going along. And I don't care how much people think that, you know, I got that, you know, I've got, you know, relationship, I left that job, left that church, whatever, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, you left, but you got the baggage still on you. You got to unpack those bags, you know? Especially if, if they left you with some insecurities and, you know, spoke some negative things over you, made you feel shame or guilty or whatever. Uh, they, you know, came in and dem tried to dem de diminish your dreams and hold you. You got to unpack those bags, guys. And sometimes you got to go in and what they let say, say let quietness and confidence be your strength. Okay. And people will notice it. See, when you come into a clean environment, I'm looking forward to that on, on Saturday with this book, Jewel in His Crown. When you come into a new environment, don't go in talking. Go in listening and hear how you respond inside. You check yourself inside before you let anything come out of your mouth. Because you all you got a conversation going in. Check to see how your inner man is agreeing or disagreeing with the conversation. And sometimes if it's not lining up with the word, it's because there's something that's offending you inside. Don't be too quick to go into relationships and you have not cleaned up past baggage. I see people do this in the church a lot. They go from church to church to church or whatever, for whatever reason. And I'm not definitely not criticizing people. But what I am saying, I don't care what your reason for, for, reason for leaving was, 
clean yourself up before you get engaged in the next thing. Don't let people just drop you into things because they don't know where your hurt is at. Uh, I can't, I can't tell you how many times uh, when, you know, um, serving in ministry that I had an opportunity to bring in the new, uh, the, the new volunteers. And, you know, it was very important that I get to know the volunteers before placing them anywhere. And uh, one of the things I, I would catch my volunteers, they came in my class. And I knew that this was going to be an open, open, you know, dialogue that was there and a place to where we could, you know, safely bring our hurts to the table and we would definitely be prayed over and all of that. I already had those people got attracted to me in my classes. So by the time they came over to volunteer, I was already in touch with them and I know why they responded. Embracing vulnerability. I remember this, this gentleman, he was a white gentleman, older, older guy. Uh, he had come into my classroom early mornings. Um, uh, we call it the covenant keepers class. And uh, he had come into my classroom and sat up under me. And, and it's obvious that was probably the first time he had, you know, probably uh, sat up under probably an African-American female like that. And, uh, but I speak from the heart and it's going to capture you wherever you are. And it just so happened he was broken in some places. So one day he set up a, um, a uh, conference, I'm in a counseling session with me. And he came in, I can't tell you how many times I've sat in that office and people came in there and they just poured their heart out. And when I would listen to him, I said, I wonder how long they've held that in. And I tell you, this guy cried and he cried. He had to have been about 70 years old then. He cried and he cried. Uh, he had stepped out on his wife. They had been married for like 35, 40 years. And um, he had become interested in some other lady and he didn't want to leave his wife, but this other lady, he was just very fond of her, you know, being able to embrace that. And these things will stop him from getting involved in ministry because all this stuff was heavy on him. And he has so many gifts, so many talents. Everybody just loved the guy in the class. And uh, we had to go and do some washing with him. That's the part that I loved about my job with the church. I got a chance to be one of the first persons to come in that they can bring this vulnerable thing to. And I go in and wash them and let them know God still loves them. And let's, let's put some things together, you know, to where you can better that relationship or that you can be honest with yourself about things that's going on. You know, tell me another young lady embracing vulnerability, another young lady, she comes in and um, she tells a story about her, her husband that took her children away from her. And she cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. Oh my God. She had me in tears and she told her story. Her story looked like a movie. And I didn't say a word. I just sat there and listened. And I kept wondering how long has she held that in? How long has she held, held that in? Before then, she had never gotten involved in anything in ministry. But after we talked about it, after a while, we went through the phase of washing. See, I've been doing coaching before I was coaching. I didn't even know I was doing that. Let's get that washed up off of you because it's hard to serve when you got all that baggage up on you, okay? You got to get ready to get yourself clean. I think everybody deserves to have somebody in their life where you can be vulnerable with. You don't have to hide things from others. You came from something of beauty. And the thing that I hear the most is about these churches, how they abuse people. When I tell you, it, it cuts through me like chalk. <laughs> Because my thing is, we're gonna have to prove that we're not like that. When, we, when I start Ultimate Connection, that's where that phrase, this is not that came from. Had to wash that up off of people. Cause they've been sitting around. That's why I say, give me one year of your time. I guarantee your life will never be the same again. See, I got to take you through the seasons of life. Winter, summer, spring and fall. Where did that drop on you? Where'd you pick that up? And listen, depending on how many summer, winter, springs and falls you've been going through, that thing has become like a, an attachment to you. And this is a place of vulnerability. That's what the coaching session, the private coaches are sessions for this particular thing right here, embracing vulnerabilities, things that you may not be so proud of, being able to trust that you can talk to someone. So as trust and intimacy grows with each other, you share some of, the, some of your vulnerabilities and inner pain with the people that are around you, with your partners or the people that are close to you. I wouldn't say do this with everybody. Ask God to show you who they are. 
And, um, and, and, and this is where your gift starts making room for it. This is normally where my gift makes room for me right here because I have that listening ear. <clears throat> and what I do is I find myself in me. That's the only reason they came to me, found themselves in me. Y'all, another story about around the building. There was this one guy came in to the church one day. Oh my God, white guy. He came in, he was screaming. Screaming to the top of his lungs. He was hurting so bad. And our pastor that was on staff was, uh, he was over our pastoral ministry. He was there as well. And um, and they came to get me, you know, Marilyn, can you come up front? You know, this guy, which meant they must have trusted me with people's hearts. You know, this guy comes in, he had gotten a diagnosis that he had a tumor on his brain. Scared him so. We got him in there, Pastor Sonny and I got in. And you know, and one thing we agreed with was the word of God. You ought to get some folks around you. See, when you're not strong in one area, or if you, you know, even if you are, you need to get you some people to couple up with you where y'all can walk together. Pastor Sonny and I went in and attacked that thing. Both of us had, we had uh, places of familiarity with pain. We went in and prayed and prayed and prayed. That God, next thing we know, that tumor was gone. Never forget that guy worshiping in service like he did. And every time he saw us, he would always, he would always embrace us. Pastor Sonny, we never talked about it. Just kept going on. You expose your soft underbelly in hopes of finding a place of safety and security when you can be yourself completely. I'm scared. This thing, this thing brings fear to me. The ability to be safely vulnerable with, with one another can strengthen the bond between you and foster a deeper love and intimacy than you thought. And, and th this is something that would always happen within the church uh, to where sometimes I think that uh, I became a threat, uh, not because it, it, it I think it was my gift, but it was my love that made me a threat to the leaders is because they didn't know how I was bringing these people in. It was this thing right here, the place where y'all don't have time to talk to people. You pass by people, you see that trash on the floor and you won't pick it up. You just walk over it like it ain't nothing. That trash on that floor is not supposed to be there. Let's get it up. That broken toaster in your house, it ain't supposed to be in there. Get it fixed or get rid of it, one of the two. People walking around were hurting their hearts all over the place and they spilling and going off for people that listen, that, that, that's not good for them. And I wouldn't, and see, had I not already gone through some things in life, probably wouldn't have bothered me. That's why I say when people treat folks bad, I say they ain't been through enough. They ain't been through enough. Because when you do go through it, you already know you wouldn't treat your worst enemy like that. There's a pain that'll suck upon you. They'll take you to a place you ain't never been before. And when you come up out of that valley, you don't want to do nothing but good to other people. So make it a goal to be completely open, uh, to be completely open, vulnerable, and real with each other. Be more, but more important, make it a goal to always treat one another vulnerabilities with tender, loving care. Matter of fact, when you, after you hear it, dismiss it. It was, it was for a moment. See, we're trying to get that five-minute experience that happened a long time ago to stop being milked continually. Let me take, take me back to the moment to where it happened at. Uh, Tamara said church hurt is something else. Uh, we have to show we have to show the difference. We are the church from the inside of us to help others through serving in love because not one person hasn't been hurt in some, some form, but God, he will send another believer to help lift their pain and restore people's faith in assembling together again. I've been there in my past and God's love is the key to restoring. That's the key to your relationships getting stronger too. You embrace this vulnerability, I, it hurt. It hurt me that you did that, you know? It hurt me that whatever, you know? And, and sometimes, sometimes it don't make sense to us, but it's like, we, we respect the hurt, you know, whatever. Next thing is we get to the fun side of it. We fun, plan fun things. All right, let's get up out of this. And this is something that I would always do like with the, with the church, you know, with my class. Y'all, we had a balance. We had a whole world going on with our class, with the Covenant Keepers class. Y'all, I started planning outside events. <laughs> we started going to different places because I needed them to get up out of that funk, get out of that church hurt. I want to show you that everybody's not like that. Relationship-wise, same thing. Let's get up out that funk. Let's go to a different place. Your relationship, your friendship, let's get up out this funk. Let's go to another play. See, when it, when you get it up out of you, 
it's very easy for you to give it to others. Remember when you come in the company with other people that you are bringing your whole self to the table. You don't let them come in and put your fire out. Sometimes they can be so strong with their negativity or so strong with stuff they going on that they'll put yours out. No, life is already serious enough and stressful. And our days are spent, all of our days are spent in some kind of way, either we work in, caring for our kids, running errands, dealing with problems and worrying about future problems. They, stuff ain't even happened yet. We still got that on our mind. So when we place value on our relationships, we should find a place of peace and respite meaning you get you get to pull away from all that care and you know let somebody else kind of handle that for a little while for the tribulations uh, for the tribulations of daily life because they're going to come you got to make room for this thing so you know we're going to go have some fun you know every now and then i would say do it on a regular you know, sometimes you need to pull away even on your job you know step away from that desk for a little while go do something fun get out of the the screen, the computer, go have some fun because it's 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 an, that endorphin when it's when it's when it's lifted, you know that funny that funny thing it gets lifted. You do do you know it gives you more energy and strength to go do other things. You could tackle problems more easily because I made room. I got too many um, problems are housing me over here. When I go over here and make room for fun, I release all of those things out, all that stuff that was worry fear, all of that. They don't get to get a chance to occupy anymore. So I make room that I can hear now the things that I need to hear. When we place value on our relationship, we, we should find that place. And then our relationship should provide an outlet for enjoying life to the fullest. Everywhere you go, everything that you do. At that early stage of your love, you didn't have to work hard. You know how it is. You, you just, you know, we Googled about it. We love the job. We love the church, whatever. But you got to make, you got to make room to do things together fun. You know, that, that's one thing about, you know, when you have great leadership, they recognize, they, they see a panoramic view. And that's what you want to find. You want to find people in ministry that have a panoramic view. You want to marry people that have a panoramic view. You want to come into friendships with people that have a panoramic view, meaning they don't just see one corner of the world. They see other people. It's called love. It's called making room for it. everything was fun and you delighted in finding fun things to do together. You want to keep your mind set on that because trouble is already in everybody's life. And you just want to do something just to break the noise up. You can make a make a goal to schedule time for fun and play every, every week, not some weeks, but you need to find a play, way to add these things down. Sit down with those that you care for to discuss what you both consider fun activity. What would you like to do next time? And listen, when you first start doing this with somebody that's not used to it, you know, they, they've been all work and that's all they do is talk about problems, trouble all the time. This is going to sound foreign to them. You ain't got to be doing that because they, they, they mad because you're trying to take them out of that world that they're in. They don't want to necessarily leave that alone, but you got to find a way and, and, you know, to keep doing it because it's like, it's too hard over here when you talk about trouble all the time and problems all the time and what the people on your job did and how they didn't treat you right, how nobody like you. We can't even enjoy your presence being there because we already know you're going to bring that junk up. Y'all ever been around people like that? They, they just constantly bring it up. So be open to try new things that might differ from your initial, <laughs> your initial ideas of fun. And just understand that in a little while, these, these pieces are going to come together. Remember, we're not trying to hurry up and do life. We're doing life together. Okay? Little by little, we're doing life together. And understand that there are some broken pieces. It's just like, I want you to picture it you know, like you're moving into a new house, this new relationship that you're in, in your heart with yourself, you're moving into a new home. You know, you got your bags packed, you got your boxes labeled from where you were, you know, but when you get into this new place, you may not put this stuff where you put in that, like where you put it in the last house. Some things not even going to need, be needful in this new place, you know, and you got to be willing to go through and sift through the stuff of what you have. Take time. Don't just go throw stuff up and then just go back to work. Take time to set things out, figure out, find out what you like, find your colors, you know, find out what bring what, you know, what brings your mood in. Y'all, when we first moved into the house here, I was trying to get my office space lined up or the, the area that I'm in lined up, and colors matter to me. Colors set my mood. It does something for me. I needed to have a place where it was clear, it was clean, it was cut. It was like I can escape from life. That's one room is set up like that. 
you know, so little bitty thing, you start building around you. Yeah, do y'all see how this is a lot of personal development and you're having to take time for you? And listen, if you go right back from this class, go straight to Facebook and start scrolling them down Facebook, you're gonna miss out on what we just talked about this morning. Give yourself time to digest this information. Don't, know, don't just go jump into things. Give yourself time to digest. And Fridays when we're, we're taking that time off, give yourself time to digest these conversations and let God put them where they need to be. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about understanding love language and supporting one another's goals. It can't just be about your goal and your goal along and what you got going on, because, you know, it's good that people support what you do and, you know, they're very um, understanding of what you do. But what about you? Uh, do you understand and support other people's goals or, or is it all about you? You trying to hear them get something done? You know, sometimes it's about sewing. You know, there are seasons to where uh, I come out of, of, of serving in one capacity as a leader and I go back to serving in another capacity. That's because that's the area I need growth in. And the best way for me to grow in that is for me to serve in that. I'm hands-on. I'm that type of person. And when I get in, first thing I do, I shut my mouth. I don't go in talking. In new places, I don't go in talking. I, I do more listening. I do more observing because I'm trying to find out where I fit in this. Because I got to find my place in it. I, I want to find what I need to bring to the table. I don't want to come in bringing unsolicited advice. Or I don't want to go in and bring in and duplicate what somebody else is doing. This kind of goes back to when somebody throws some, some gesture out. Don't come back and piggyback what they're saying. Add to it some kind of way. Add, add, add your uniqueness onto it. But more than anything, let them know that they're important what they do. And uh, when you make people feel important, hey, They'll literally give you, you give people what they want when they'll give you what you need. Give them what they want, that love language that they want, and they'll give you what, what they need, what you need. It's like, it's, it's, it's a spirit of reciprocity, just going back and forward. In your business, in your ministry, building a relationship is gonna be important. It's needful, it's necessary. Before you even try to launch out, know the people to whom you do and getting ready to do business with. And more than anything, with the people on your team, the people in your life, everywhere you go, we're getting ready to start the retreat again. Y'all, I can't wait to see who God brings. God, God brought the first five people in last night. And I was like, oh, my God. And listen, I'm attracting people from the Georgia area. I don't know what it is about Georgia. But they're coming in from there. They're coming from the South in many, many ways. I don't know what it is. And I know if it's because it's the Bible Belt or that these are things that we just enjoy ministry together. But they came in, no qualms. I said, we bringing in a different cost of people. The cost change for the retreat. So it's going to bring in different people. It's going, And when I say different people, it's going to bring a different mindset. Relationship, we're, bit, we're growing in our relationship. And we're having to do something different to get there. So, y'all, I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is doing in all of us. I'm excited about the growth that I'm getting ready to take because I think it's getting ready to be in leaps and bounds. Because right now we're doing the groundwork for where we're going. And you got to be still in this place. And in just a little bit, you're going to see what you saw. You're going to see why you were doing what you were doing. You know, the Bible said, whatever, whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it as unto the Lord. Keep on doing it. Ecclesiastes says, cast your bread out in the water. And not many days hence, it's going to come back to you. And when I tell you it's going to come back, it's going to come back good measure. Press down, shaking together and running up. You're going to wonder, and others are going to wonder how you got there. Whereas they checked out when it came down to serving people, developing relationship goals. They checked out during that time so they don't get the reward that you get. And sometimes you don't even know, how did I even endure all of that? Repay. God will come back and repay in a grand way. Karma, the law of karma, what you sow, you shall reap. You keep that in mind everywhere you go. When you're doing your journal in the morning time, remember the first great law, what you reap is what you sow is what you're going to reap. And it's going to come back to you. So we want to use that time <clears throat> wisely in our relationship. We're going to put good things on the ground. If it's a place where you're being challenged, just call it what it is. It's a challenge, what I'm going through. What a person said, it's a challenge. That's how it's not a problem. It's just a challenge to me. And then we're going to go in there and figure out what God has to say. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to open up in the morning with those chats. We're going to start with those chats from yesterday. We'll put the chats from today. 
and then we're going to have a conversation. Then we're going to finish up those. And then there's 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 one that I definitely want to go. We may hit it on next week where we talk about those boundaries in our relationships. Um, I think uh, let, let me kind of go back to our piece of. Oh, yeah, good bone structure. That's what we'll talk about, the boundaries being set up in our lives. So I'm excited. I pray you guys will invite others to join in with us. It's a great conversation time. Relationships is always where I always grow at. Anytime we start talking about that, whether it be in morning motivation or in here, that's the place where people start gathering in because that's where we're having problems at in our relationship. We don't know how to deal with one another. We don't know how to do kind gestures. Just do it just because. You gotta have no 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 motive behind it. Just do it just because that's who you are. You're teaching people who you are, teaching people how to treat you. Amen. Amen. Your ministry has restored my faith. Amen. Amen, Shelly. My ministry with other women is such a hurtful place for me. Uh Shelly, I was there too. I was there too. But that's one of the reasons I had hurt uh from when I lived in Houston. Not only when I lived in Houston, when I was here in Tyler, too, when I was in Tyler too, in my early, early years, my teen years. I had some hurt from some women that made me uh, not want to trust at all. But um, I chose one, one, one good friend. When I came back, when I came to the Tyler, Renata was it. I ain't let other people in my life. She may not even know what it was, but I did not. I had friends all in Houston, and they were just. That's why I used to. I used to think women were messy. I never would have thought God would bring into me into a ministry with other women because I didn't care for women. And then in reality, what did I didn't care for women? I didn't care for those women. But I came back and my, my relationship was restored in that same place. But I did a little bit at a time. I didn't do a whole bunch of them at one time. I did a little bit at a time. And I found me in the midst of it all. Everybody's not going to receive your type of love. They didn't grow up the way you grew up, Meryl. You know, y'all come from two different backgrounds. And they do what they do. This is what the people do around them. So you got to choose wisely where you cast your bread at. You can't just put yourself out there with everybody and think that people are going to give back to you uh, what you give back. Y'all, listen, God is even taking me back down memory lane in my relationships. Oh, my God. Now, that's been a journey. Everything, people can't always receive the type of love you give because they don't understand your love. You don't have to give your love to everybody. When people don't understand it. You want to find that thing that fits you very well. And you can't run away from it because it's something that you desire, but you got to go back to find out where it was broken at to begin with. And, and you've been constantly trying to prove that you are who you are. I think that's been my struggle all of my life, trying to let them know I am who I say I am. I'm not a counterfeit or anything. It's, it's been hard for it's been hard for relationships because they don't trust that what you're saying is true because they so see so many things. So my desire is to connect with people that are healthy in their relationships, just like I aspire to be healthy. I'm not completely there because I got these broken pieces that are there and I have to be able to embrace vulnerability. I have to understand. And every time I always give it another try. I always do because it's in my heart. I can't do nothing else. You know, women, if I see something that a woman does that reminds me of that, I just remember this is not that because I look at it different now. You know, we're in each other's space. I want to teach them how to love. That's one of the first thing I did when we came to Ultimate Connection. We do not fight with one another. And we have built the best relationships, y'all, over the years. The best relationship. Came in and united women together. That's what this retreat's going to do. It's going to unite some people together. Y'all will be, y'all won't even know each other before you got there. But you're going to build up a lasting friendship. It was that person that you were needing all along. But you had to step outside the box to go find them. Matter of fact, you didn't have to go find them. You just need to show up where your synergy was at and what you needed was already there. It always happens. It's like magic. Jackie, all of those that are with us will tell you it's like magic. It happens every time. You don't know what you need. Now, I invite y'all to come on in and try it. I'm, I'm not going to push nobody. All I'm going to say is come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, the price has gone up. It don't make no difference. The Lord is the Lord. You know, I'm telling you, it does something to you that you can't even explain. It leaves something on you. What the heck you leave that? Let me tell you, you leave that retreat and you thought you think that some piece of heaven done dropped in your life because it was a missing piece that was there. I dare you. I dare you to go before God on what you need. Yeah, Matrix was there. I dare you to go before God on behalf of your financial needs. 
God, I can't afford it right now. You don't know what you can afford. You got to make room for what you need to change. And you know, a lot of people said they couldn't afford a coaching either, but they eventually did. It's just new to you now. It's just a new concept. Come on in and taste and see. Oh my God, that the Lord is good. Y'all, this time I'm making room. I went ahead and hired somebody to come in and do the event plan. And I thank God. Thank God that somebody, God brought the right people in. Now I can come and love on the ladies. I want to be one of y'all. I don't want to be running around, scaring around. I want to be there. I want to build relationship. That's what it's all about. So that I can make the retreats impactful. Because that's what my career is going to be moving forward, is bonding relationships together. I don't care if it's people on the job or what. I want to let you guys know y'all can get along with each other. Y'all just need to look at each other from the different angles that you're in. You know, you got 2020 vision. They got a little something different over there. Something kind of got them off course. Let's get them back on course. Amen. He will make a way. He sure will, Shirley. He will make a way. All you got to do is put your first foot in. I'm interested. That's first thing. Give a yes to it. I'm interested. And Lord, I know the Lord will provide. Let me let me tell you something. Best way for you to get into situations like that, start sowing. Start sowing and asking God to open up doors for you. You just never know how God's going to provide the income that you need. I didn't mean to come in and talk about that, but while we're here, we might as well because we're building a relationship. I'm going out with a bang from my job. Lord, I'm going in to do what you have asked me to do. I'm building these relationships. We're going to build them solid. Because I want these people to know they're millionaires in their heart. You know, you have you have value, you have worth. Amen. I'm putting my foot first because I want. Yes, ma'am. You, you listen, you want to you want to meet people all over the world. You don't even know where you're gonna make contact for that door you need open later on. You don't know where these people are. All you know is God gave you a dream. How is the dream gonna come back? I don't know. I'm just going to take the Lord at his word every step away. And I ain't going to beg, ain't going to borrow, ain't going to play. All I'm going to do is take the Lord as what I'm going to sow my way in and watch God do some amazing things. You don't know how. I'm telling you. Quit trying to go into tomorrow. Just do your first thing. Lord, I want to be there. I got to be there in Jesus' name. Y'all be blessed. I'll meet you back again on tomorrow.